What if I told you that if you got a water bed, it's possible to jump up and down on the bed even though it has no springs? But this is against science, it doesn't work that way. But it actually is possible to jump up and down on a water bed. Here is the secret sauce. Let's fill the bed with spring water. You're welcome. What deadly ocean animal are you? Based on your zodiac, Aries, you are the bull shark. They are large, in charge, aggressive, and extremely confident about what is their territory, and yeah, don't fuck with either of them. Taurus, you are the saltwater crocodile. You guys can be very calm at times, but the minute you mess with them, it is game over. Scorpios, you are the blue-ringed octopus. These guys are extremely intelligent, calculating, and also can be very, very toxic, specifically Scorpio men. Pisces, you are the box jellyfish. You guys are soft and squishy and very wishy-washy and controlled by currents or your emotions, but also you guys can be some of the most deadly or terrifying thing. Capricorns, you guys are puffer fish. Usually you guys are very calm, adorable, engaging, and extremely intelligent, and you guys also don't usually hurt people. Cancers, we are xanthidae crabs. They are absolutely iconic and one of the deadliest animals on the planet. They have a hard exterior, and if you crack it open, there's a lot of soft and squishy things inside. It is a beautiful day for science. Let's go. So Jupiter and Saturn are gonna be making out in the sky soon. So we've got this little guy to look at him and that beefcake. First thing I gotta do is set up the little guy. So let's go. Because of the C word, we'll put little Petri dishes with Velcro strips on top of the eyepieces and clean them off between everyone viewing. Here I'm opening up the dome of the big guy and turning on the telescope. Now we get to move him to Jupiter. He's doing such a good job. Now I gotta rotate the dome to make sure we're not just looking at metal. He is nice and bright in there. Let's take a peek. And that's Jupiter. We can see the stripes and the bands, all that jazz. I'll take a picture at night so that you can get a better view. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh. Here's Jupiter in those stripes and storms. Here's Jupiter with more exposure to see those Galilean moons. And here's Saturn and its rings. In people with darker skin, health disparities due to under-recognition of diseases have long been documented. Here's an example. Lyme disease is a bacterial infection that can be carried by ticks and cause a characteristic bullseye rash. But medical students are often taught to recognize what it looks like on white skin, not dark skin. See the difference? If you Google Lyme disease bullseye rash, most of the images you'll see are all white. Under-recognition causes African Americans to be 10% more likely to show late manifestations of the disease, such as neurologic or heart problems. Oh yeah, look at this. This is cool. There's the spaceship, you see it? It's right there. Yes it is. No it's not. I guarantee it, Veronica. Look at it. No, that's what me- look at it. Holy cripes. No it's not. No, it is not. It is not. Look at it. It's perfect. It's perfectly freaking round. Look at it. Observez bien ce phénomène. C'est une expérience qu'on voit pas mal tourner en ce moment avec du chocolat en poudre qu'on vient tremper dans du lait. Et maintenant, si je viens piquer à la surface, tout disparaît. Mais on va pousser l'expérience un petit peu plus loin et essayer d'observer ça avec mon méga zoom macro de la mort. Le truc ici, c'est que la poudre de chocolat est en fait assez hydrophobe pour plusieurs raisons, notamment parce que les particules de cacao sont super fines, donc le lait et la poudre se mélangent pas super bien. En physique, on dit qu'il y a un mouillage partiel, car si je viens déposer de l'eau sur la poudre, en fait, elle va pas s'étaler complètement, elle va former une goutte. Le fait que ça se mélange pas bien fait que lorsque je viens casser la surface du liquide avec le cure-dent, tout le liquide va vouloir retrouver sa forme de goutte au plus vite et donc s'échapper de la poudre. Et ça donne cet effet assez stylé. Ok, bébé, concentre-toi, pose tes chips. Regarde bien ce que je veux faire, je me suis perfectionné. Dans mon pouvoir du feu. Qu'est-ce que c'est Arrête. Mais d'ailleurs, t'as vu Freezing crystals to see their different energies. Amethyst. Rose quartz. Green aventurine. Supposedly, they will have different freeze patterns. Let's see what happens. L'eau de javel sur une fraise, ça fait quoi Je laisse la réaction tourner, on voit ce que ça donne demain. Ok, on est le lendemain de l'expérience et tenez-vous bien, voilà la fraise. C'est abusé.
On voit qu'assez rapidement, la fraise commence à se faire décolorer et perdre sa couleur rouge. C'est assez impressionnant. L'eau de Javel, c'est de l'hypochlorite et du chlorure de sodium. Et le truc, c'est qu'en présence de matière organique, ici la fraise, l'eau de Javel va libérer du chlore. Et là, c'est l'oxydation. Le chlore va arracher des atomes, former des nouvelles liaisons moléculaires, etc. Et en fait, ça a pour résultat de changer la couleur, ou plutôt de décolorer ici la fraise, et c'est incroyable. Sérieusement, une fraise blanche. Sur quoi je pourrais essayer pour la suite Donnez-moi des idées. Et surtout, faites gaffe avec l'eau de Javel, c'est dangereux. A quick romp around in the acid, always the rinse, and then we'll pop it into the anodizing bath. Sometimes I have to color rings before I weave the final piece. So, bronze, excellent. Blue, excellent. Light blue, excellent. A little bit of yellow, then we'll turn to pink, and then to purple, and then we need to finally get to teal. Oh, I did miss that one on the end. Ah, oh, what a lovely teal. Perfect.